Today, I'm going to show you how a wind Two videos works. about a wind vane and then another EXO video on a Wednesday also about wind vanes? Come on. Mandy! Yeah? The sailing channel isn't sailing at all. They're just sitting in marinas and telling me things that I can look at myself. Really? Hello sailors, thank you for clicking this week's video. Today we're taking you on our sail from Gibraltar across the Atlantic Ocean. Just kidding, we're going to Cadiz. We'll show you what it's like to cross the Strait of Gibraltar and we're heading into the night pushing north along the Atlantic coast of Spain. There's always water flowing into the Med, but surface currents go both ways, depending on the tide. Tidal streams going west can hit 3 knots, streams going east up to 7 knots. It's a good idea to look at current maps and plan your exit accordingly. Otherwise, you'll be as slow as we are. Or they are. And then on, out through the Straits, which was a difficult trip. It took us nine days to get out through the Strait of Gibraltar, which is only 10 miles long, so strong was the wind against us. And then when we crossed our outward track off Cape St. Vincent, Susan and I felt, well, we still got a long way to go to get home, but we'll have a little celebration. And for this occasion, she had hoarded a Dundee cake. In the worst case, you'll get hit with seven knots of current, making it literally impossible to leave the strait. You will feel most of the current hitting you inside the strait, duh, and as soon as you reach Tarifa, it'll be easier. We stayed as much north as we felt comfortable, since current is worse in the middle. Also, this way we stayed clear of the shipping lanes. Crossing the strait is considered a special moment for many sailors, we heard, so we treat it as such. Seems like they're sailing to me though. Also he's wearing the same shirt in every episode. It's like with the one with the logo on the pocket and mm -hmm. like the sailboat on the back. Yeah. It's almost like they want me to buy one. Why don't you get over it and just get one already? It's probably just so they can keep doing what they're doing. That's a great idea. <laughs> Tall drink of water to start the morning. I'm rolling over, pull back the covers Oh, you can see the steps for the, of the, the oh. monkeys Yeah, true Monkeys line Nice This house is empty, you've been gone for hours I filmed that. Did you? I'm a bit too late. <laughs> Damn it. I didn't realize how big it was going to be. Hello, guys. What's up? Come back. Don't leave. Come back. We have obligations. Woo! Come dance for us. Come on. Whee! Thank you. Thanks. Much appreciated. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> We finally left Gibraltar. <laughs> I think tonight it's been exactly a month since we arrived, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. So we've been here for oh, a month, four weeks then. Uh, we got everything, the wind vanes installed. We have new batteries and a new panel and everything's there. The winds are perfect, exactly right to the tide. So. We need low tide to get out because high tide is going to be too much current coming in so that we won't make it. And we're actually sailing. We just saw dolphins, loads. We saw jumping tuna. It's going to be an exciting sail, isn't it? Yeah. How do you feel about leaving today? Oh, it's exciting. Like, honestly, now we're leaving the med today. Oh, true, we're also leaving the med. We're leaving the med today. Oh. I can already feel it's very cold. Yeah, the wind's chilly. It's very Atlantic-y. In one and a half years, we've never caught a fish. But now, Madame, I can manage whatever life throws at me, decided to put a lure out to catch a meter tuna <laughs> without ever killing a fish or knowing how to kill a fish. I, I, I looked it up like 
theoretically. I want to see you kill a fish today. It's almost four now. The sun's gonna set in, I guess, four to five hours. And by then we should be out of uh, the strait towards Barbate and en route to Cadiz. We're gonna take about 18 hours. So with this speed that we're doing right now, we are gonna arrive at six in the morning. Now we have like now we have a new system. We have like our normal plotter and we have a cheap Android tablet with Navionics and routing and then you know I can just pretend to be like a big captain with multiple screens in front of me. <laughs> Not look at anything around me, just the screens. That's how I like it. We stupid millennials, aren't we? <laughs> Always with the screen in their hands. I'm happy we made it all. Gonna... That was a job, eh? In two days. So you can imagine I already made food. Now I'm hungry because I keep smelling the food. Do you want some too? Bring it. Bring it! So yesterday and today we made some new friends on a 44 footer with a displacement of 16 tons. And we thought, ah oh, yeah, with light winds we're gonna be like we could buddy boat, but within 10 minutes they were gone. We are very slow compared to the rest of the world, I guess. Still enjoyable. I think Gibraltar is also the only place where you just sail straight through buttloads of tankers and nobody really cares. AIS alarm goes off every constantly, so I turn it off. But everybody's anchored and just everyone's also sailing around, so it should be. It's how it's been done for ages. That down there is Africa, and over there is Ceuta, which is a little enclave of the Spanish. Now we're going this way, and that way is the Atlantic. I don't know if there's current or not, maybe there even is some in our favor already because we're doing 4-6 with a dirty hull on a apparent wind of 9 on a broad reach. So that hasn't happened in a while. Yeah, that's, that's sailing through the Gibraltar Strait, I guess. Why is this a big thing? Well, because you haven't gone into the strait yet. Jeez, he's so gullible. What are you looking for, subscribers? It's windy, but not windy enough, apparently. Not for a downwind sail. So it's not super enjoyable, but it's also not bad. It's, a, it's an experience I wouldn't want to miss. We are almost around Tarifa, we can already see the kite surfers on the beach. It took us nine days to get out through the Strait of Gibraltar. And it's been a strange ride till now, because we have the current with us, or the tides, I guess, and the wind is coming from behind. We have full sails up, not anymore, now just the Genoa, but before full sails, and the engine on two and a half thousand RPM, and still we were doing less than three knots, which is understandable. But the frustrating part was that every other boat, even the ones that were really far behind us, overtook us. And uh, we don't really understand why. So we feel a little bit underpowered at the moment. How about you, Boo? How you doing? I'm just waiting, enjoying the view of slow ferries. So apparently, after Tarifa, well, Tarifa is a town where you have more than 30 knots on 300 days a year. So once we pass the Cape, I think we're gonna have a bit more wind than now. We have about 16 now. So maybe we do three and a half knots of boat speed. <laughs> So under engine, we pushed forward hoping to get out before the stream turns against us. This wash looks like we are very fast, but in fact 3.8 knots speed over ground is not that fast. But yeah, we made it around Tarifa before the sunset. The sea state isn't really bad, it's not like you're getting hit with waves or anything, but it just feels like you're drifting. We now officially left the med and we're gonna do Atlantic sailing now. Many more good sails. Many more oceans. 
any more oceans yet. We haven't named our traditional autopilot in one and a half years. People even name their regular autopilots. And I don't know, I feel kind of thankful for it. Because all of this, like we, us talking, that wouldn't happen. And I, we met people in, in uh, Gibraltar and the marina who want to cross oceans, who don't have one yet. And like they consider this crossing preparation gear. I'm trying to say that for us, having an electric autopilot was a prerequisite even and especially in the Met. And the guys that we met just considered it for a big crossing. Yeah, sailing is different for everyone, but from our experience, people who live on boats full-time tend to not hand-steer their day trips. And doing Mediterranean day trips, but basically going every single day... There's no way, no way that you would hand-steer that. But the, I think that just makes us lazy sailors. <laughs> no, we learn from the, from the pilot. I just put my finger on the wheel when the pilot's on. It's better than anything, so just you learn how to handle it. So it doesn't, just, it makes us lazy, but it doesn't make us bad. It makes us electronic smart, you know? <laughs> smart as a computer. Oh, the tide has changed into our favor. We're doing like six and a half knots now on engine instead of two and a half. And we got, now it's only 13 before we had 20 knots of ground wind and the sun's going down. So we're going to reef the main, pull it back up and then hopefully have a nice broad reach all the way to Cadiz from land which is perfect there's no waves so when we go through the night we usually pull in the reef um, because it doesn't take that much of, of like speed away and if the wind picks up then it's already reefed and we're fine so if we go through an overnight and we do 4.5 instead of 5 because of a reef main that's half an out of boat speed and if you think about like going for 10 hours that's probably about five miles of difference so uh, why 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 even bother thinking about it and just be comfortable through the night or no sail change that's just way more way more relaxing for both people the person asleep and the person on watch Yep. Alright. Right. Check in the back. Okay, you can pull a bit more. Yep. I think that's it. So when the main's down, it's always easier to just pull the reefing line in instead of going all the way up and then down again. So then you have a really nice and tight reef. So we try to get all of our line in through the blocks and Mandy actually made some markers last season like a little sharpie so we know how far to pull the I'm trying to explain that it is a cool idea to mark your reefing line at the spin lock jammer so you know when the line is tight and you reefed well so we're gonna hoist it and then uh, probably dawdle around with five knots of five knots of high speed <laughs> By now, we sailed quite some overnights, but never more than a night or two in a row, and we realized we don't need a schedule for that, really. Whoever is tired goes to bed, and we switch when the other one gets tired. Hello. Oh, hi there. Doesn't really make sense to us to wake someone up if the person on watch can go for another hour. I'm sure that it's different when you're at sea for longer passages, where it would make sense to do a proper schedule. Just started my watch. It's 4.15 and we have another three hours to go, four maybe, uh, sea is so flat, wind comes from land and we have 12 knots on the beam which is really nice. It's a very cold night and uh, in the distance I can spot Cadiz already. There's a massive hanging bridge and we're gonna see it in the daytime can drive under it and then be protected from all sides of weather on an anchorage just under the bridge. Ooh, it's 14 meters. Maybe I should check the charts. 
But it's been like that for a while. All this like soapy, sandy area around Cadiz, between 30 and 50 meters. Oh, it goes up to 20 now. So it does look a bit freaky with the depth sounder at 15, but there's no buoys. So that means there's no danger. Can't see the danger, there's no danger. Stopping four and a half meters. Reverse. And over there is our travel lift. Where we're gonna haul out tomorrow morning. So now we're just anchoring in the bay in front of the harbor entrance. I'm gonna zip over to the marina office to confirm the reservation and then sleep. A bit more reverse, we're just going sideways. Okay. We have explained our anchoring hand signs in previous videos, but you're probably new here, so this is how we do it. We both confirm what we're doing with hand signs, so we don't need to yell. When digging in the anchor, we go in reverse on 1000 RPMs and we put up our index finger for 1000. 1 1.5 is index finger and pinky up. Two. It was really amazing actually. I mean through the strait we had a lot of current and everybody kept overtaking us. But after that once we were around Tarifa and once we had a little uh, mishap with the seals <laughs> and uh, had we had more than 30 knots we might have ripped the Genoa. <laughs> it went a bit wrong but after that everything was perfect. It was pretty good. Yeah right. Well you know, everybody said that in the straight you're gonna like have current against you and it's gonna suck. And it kinda did. I feel like we were the only ones who motored. There was a pogo. Everybody was sailing and they were doing twice the speed we were. Yeah, well it was a pogo. No, but also the other boats. Yeah, okay, it was a 44 footer. And the one that overtook hull. us? That was behind us? Okay, everyone overtook us. Yeah, so now we're gonna have a nice breakfast and then um, we'll be going into the marina to arrange the last paperwork for tomorrow's haul out because uh, we finally made it. Next week we're flying and clean up that mess. Hope you had some fun today and have a great weekend. And don't forget to call your parents once in a while. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video and leave a comment and tell us if you liked this video. Bye! But I had hoarded something even better than a Dundee cake. I had hoarded a garrafon of excellent Spanish wine. And we started our little party in the middle of the day. And the party went on most of the afternoon in the sunshine.